Hello everyone, Ryan here with Airs Tech. Today I'm going to show you how you can block pings on your Cisco devices. And I'm also going to show you a command which will allow you to block an interface from forwarding unreachable replies, which are going to result from the ping being blocked. Why would we want to block a ping? Well, network security could be one reason. A person with malicious intent could potentially run a ping sweep against your network discover which IP addresses are in use, and then use that information in an attack. So, with that said, let's take a look at what we can do to block that. So you can see the topology on the screen here. I have the PC in the top left, which I'm using to telnet into R1, and then I'm telnetting from R1 to R2 and R3 as we need to for this example. For this example, I've already configured all of the IP addressing and OSPF to do the routing between R1, R2, and R3. And all we need to do now is some verification with pings, and then we'll get started with how we can block those. Okay, so here we are at the command line. You can see we're on R1. Let's go ahead and ping R2. And looks good there. Let's ping R3. And again, everything looks good there. Let's turn it over to R3 and make sure we can ping back to R1. I know based on what we just saw, we should be able to, but you'll see why we're doing this later in the example. And looks good there as well. So I'm going to now go to R2. And we're going to configure the access list. We're going to do an extended access list. And we're going to block ICMP. And don't forget to allow all other connections, otherwise you will lock yourself out of the device if you're telnetted in. And we will go to the interface between R1 and R2. We're going to apply the access list inbound on that interface. And go back to R1. And let's ping R2 again. Okay, so we see now we're getting unreachable replies returned from R2. Let's try and ping R3. Again, unreachable. And now let's go out to R3 and ping back to R1. Now we see they time out. The reason for that is that technically the ping from R3 to R1 isn't being blocked. It's the actual echo reply from R1 back to R3 that's being blocked. So rather than the unreachable reply, which tells us that our inbound ping from R3 to R1 is being blocked, administratively. Instead, what we see is that it times out because R3 is not seeing a reply come back at all. So now let's go back to R2. And again, on the interface between R1 and R2, I'm going to configure another command, no IP unreachables. Now what that says is that R2 is not going to pass unreachable replies back to R1. So now from R1's perspective, it appears that the ping just timed out, which in a real life sit, uh, situation would basically look like you were trying to ping an IP address that just wasn't in use. And if we try and ping R3 we see from R1, we see the same thing happens which means that 
the no IP unreachables command is not only blocking unreachable replies from R2, it's blocking any unreachable replies that try and go out the interface between R1 and R2, regardless of how far down the line they come from. So let's take a look at another example. Back on R1, I'm going to ping R2 again. We'll see the access list is still, still applied, but I've removed the no IP unreachables command on R2. Now on R1, I'm going to go to the interface from R1 to R2, and I'm going to apply no IP unreachables there. So now let's ping R2 again. Now we see we're still receiving unreachables. What this tells us is that the no IP unreachables command will filter an interface from sending out the unreachables or forwarding them on. However, it will not act as a filter to prevent the unreachables from being returned to a device. Okay, so I have one more example here for you. For this example, I've left the access list the same on R2 but I've taken it off of the interface on R2. So let's go ahead and ping R2 to verify that we are able to. And that looks good. And let's ping R3 and make sure we're able to do that. And that looks good as well. And let's go ahead and tell it over to R2. And we're going to go under the interface between R1 and R2. And I'm going to apply the same access list outbound on R2. And we'll see what happens there. And this is an important note as far as access lists go. So let's go ahead and ping R3 first this time. And as expected, that timed out because the echo replies are not making it back from R3 to R1. And let's ping R2. Uh-oh, what happened there? It worked. Why is that? Access lists will block traffic that is forwarded through a port, but they do not block the traffic if they're applied outbound on the device that they're applied on. So, as you saw, R3's traffic was forwarded through R2's interface and it was blocked by the access list. But the traffic from R2, the reply from R2, since it originated on the device that the access list is applied on, it was not filtered and it was allowed to go through. So that's just an important thing to keep in mind as you're setting up your access lists. That said, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you find the information useful. If you like the video and want to see more, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And as I said, many more will be coming in the future. Thank you for viewing.